Choosing Love by Ginny Rules 27. Chapter 38. Mal glared as Freddy strolled over to her, a twisted smile on his face. What in the world was he doing here? He was supposed to be on the aisle, hiding from the rats who were determined to personally escort him to Tartarus for what he did to Ryan. What? No warm welcome, your majesty. Freddy asked with a slight smirk, and Mal pulled herself out of her thoughts. It wouldn't do to be caught unawares, especially since no one knew what trick Freddy had up his sleeve. Or is it my lady? I know you witches appreciate a good title, even if it's completely undeserved. The only warm embrace you'll receive is the warm embrace of your precious hellfire, Freddy! Mal spat, resting a hand on Harry's shoulder as if to keep him from hauling off and decking Freddy right there, despite every fibre in her being, wanting to obliterate the leader of the angels. They needed Freddy to make the first attack. Sure, the cotillion guests were gasping in shock, most likely at how rude they were being. But they didn't know who Freddy was. All they were probably gasping at was Mal's statement. After all, no one there knew what Freddy was truly like. If she or Harry attacked first, it might look like they were just attacking a poor, innocent guest. Not that Freddy had ever been innocent, but the Oridons weren't likely to know that. Oh, sure, they might have been a moment when he was an innocent as a baby, but Frollo more than likely eliminated that twisted the babe into someone who shared his fanaticism, his lack of regard for others' lives. A hand on her own shoulder brought Mal out of her thoughts, and she looked over to see Ben glaring at Freddy. Ben never glared. If he was ever upset with someone, he opted to employ a set of disappointed puppy eyes that were guaranteed to make you melt into a puddle of scummy goo. Leah was probably the only person Ben had actually glared at. Well, and Natalie, had he actually been face to face with her. Sadly, only the phone fully felt the brunt of Ben's anger in that instance. Ben truly was just too... good to glare at people, even if they deserved it. Then again, Ben knows what Freddy did to Ryan's sister. He was there when Freddy stabbed my shoulder with his dagger, and I'm sure Harry and Uma have told him stories from our time on the aisle. After all, Harry had called Freddy the spawn of Satan at the planning session, when we were trying to figure out which VKs would make it up the next group. If there's anyone in Oridon who truly knows what Freddy Frollo was like, it's Ben. Mal thought, what are you doing here? Ben asked, his voice cool but Mal could tell that even he was struggling to maintain control. Out of the corner of her eye, she could see Amir and Akio staring at Ben in shock, clearly not expecting that question from him. Yeah, Freddy, this party's invitation only, and I'm pretty sure you're not on the guest list. Uma exclaimed as she came marching up, Jay quickly on her heels. Even in their fancy attire, they moved like they were ready for a fight instead of a dance. The former option was much more likely when it came to Freddy, especially when it came to one of the leaders of the rats. Malvo scanned the surrounding guests to try to see if she could locate the other VKs. The last thing she wanted was for Freddy to try and ensnare one of them, or worse, use them to get back at Mal, Uma, Jay or Harry. Carlos was busy trying to get Jane and some of the other girls back into the waiting area. Even if he hadn't interacted with Freddy much, Mal knew that Carlos was aware of what Freddy was capable of, considering the younger boy had been under the rats' protection when they were back on the aisle. Out of the corner of her eye, she could see Evie trying to do the same with some of the cheerleaders. The girls were at least listening to her, but the four boys on the squad were trying to join the tawny boys in providing backup if they needed it. What exactly they had to do against Freddy, Mal had no idea but there was safety in numbers. Gil was nowhere to be seen, but Mal wasn't all that worried. The last time she had caught a glimpse of the blonde, he had been talking to Harry. The first mate, Mal assumed, 
must have given him orders to start getting some of the guests to safety, in case this turned into a fight. Besides, with what all Freddy had done to Gil's family, she knew the dim-witted younger boy would have probably pummeled Freddy into a pulp. Not that it would have been a bad thing, Freddy no longer on the planet, but that was something he would have done, something the angels would have done. They were not angels. They were rats. They were pirates. They were better than that. With so much death and despair already heavily present on the isle, what was the use of adding to it? But they weren't on the isle right now. And with Freddy standing right before her, it would really be a matter of self-defence. Which was why Mal knew it was taking all of Uma's willpower not to send Freddy flying, all of Jay's strength to not knock the older boy flat on his face. Mal quickly scanned the audience once more, to make sure she didn't miss any of the crew. She didn't see Hattie, but she was trying not to panic over that. Their mom was there. She might have taken him to safety and then come back to make sure Mal was alright. Mal wasn't even mad about her leaving. She knew her brother's safety was the highest priority. She may have trained him on swords, but Freddy was still years older than the both of them. Sometimes, size did end up beating skill. Why, I thought this party was for all of Auradon. Not just witches who don't know their place, Freddy said, putting out the invitation he had swiped from his stall and just suit jacket with a smirk and Mal's eyes darted to it. And I have an invitation. Jay marched over and snatched the invitation out of Freddy's hand, quickly giving the invitation a glance over. Unless you've recently changed your name to Char Charming, this invitation isn't yours, he growled. I didn't say I had been invited, Jay. Only that I had an invitation, Freddy shot back. Now scurry along with your tail between your legs. The adults are talking. Mal could hear the gasps coming from the charming contingent could see the worry on every one of the royal's faces, and couldn't help but wonder where Chad was. She hadn't seen him at all, and it wasn't like Chad to miss out on something that could make him the centre of attention. Where's Chad? Akio demanded, apparently having the same line of thought as Mal. Chad might not have been his favourite person, but he didn't deserve to be injured. Or worse. Chad's sisters might have complained about him, but Akio knew they'd be devastated if anything happened to their older brother. What have you done with him? Why so quick to jump to conclusions? Freddy smirked as the Arendelle Prince's glare only grew. Charming's fine. In fact, I have no idea who he is. He certainly doesn't matter to me. There's only one person who will suffer my revenge tonight. In your dreams, Freddy! Mal exclaimed knowing full well who he was talking about. Like you'd ever grace my dreams, witch! Freddy spat back. The only ones you'd be in would be my nightmares! Mal glared at him, her green eyes flashing in her anger and irritation. Even the feeling of Ben's hand on her shoulder wasn't enough to pull her back to feeling anything remotely resembling calm. Though, was it her imagination? Or was Ben's grip tightening a bit? Thankfully, it wasn't the shoulder that Freddy had stabbed all those months ago. Even though it had healed by this point, Mal knew it, it would probably still hurt if Ben gripped it. I'm going to have to ask you to leave, Ben said, his voice hard, and those around him looked to the teenaged king in surprise. Ben had always been one to advocate giving the VKs a second chance, or even a chance. For Ben to ask one of them to leave. It was something, in all fairness, they'd expect from Beast. Or Fairy Godmother. Or maybe even one of the Tawny team. Not him. But I just got here, Freddy smirked. And I'm not really in the mood to leave. Not with all of the excitement. The excitement you're causing, Boomer growled. Chip leaned forward so his mouth was by Ben's ear. Burn. He's got a sword. I can see the hilt on his belt. Say the word and I can rush him before he gets the chance to hurt Mal. 
The former teacup was sure Ben's friends would probably make the same offer, but he was older than them. Never mind the fact that they were also heirs to their respective thrones. Chip wasn't going to let anything happen to his brother or his friends. No, Ben muttered back, shaking his head slightly. Get my parents out of here, Chip. If anything happens to me, they can help advise Emma. If possible, I'd get Lady Persephone to safety too. We're in the middle of the water. There's not much her powers would be able to assist with, and Mal would be devastated if Freddy here did anything to her mom. Ben, Lady Persephone is a goddess! And more importantly, you're the king! We've got to! No, Chip. Get my parents out of her. Ben said, and then turned back to Freddy. I think you've misunderstood. That wasn't a request. Freddy shook his head and drew his sword, earning more gasps from the panicked quotidian goers. Some of them began to rush to the stairs, something Mal didn't blame them for one bit. The only place I'll be going is to Notre Dame after this, to celebrate one less witch on the planet. You, beastie will just be a momentary distraction before the main event. Freddy, don't even think about it, Mal exclaimed, stepping forward. Freddy may have been able to hurt her crew, may have been able to push her into the cove when she was nine, but she'd be damned if he hurt Ben. Your fight's with me! No, Mal! Ben shouted, shrugging off his suit jacket and handing it to a nearby attendant. He looked over at his best friends, who were looking at Ben with worry dancing in their eyes. Guys, make sure Mal doesn't get hurt. Ben, you've got to be out of your mind! Akio, this is my kingdom, Ben said, his voice soft as he searched for anyone who might have a sword on their person. He wasn't about to fight Freddy unarmed, after all. If I don't fight to protect my citizens, who will? I will, Mal stated to look back over at her boyfriend and crossed her arms over her chest. Ben, this is madness! To quote, or at least paraphrase Ali, Life's boring if you don't do at least ten mad things before breakfast. Ben stated gently, softly cupping her cheek with his hand. You can't save the day every time, Mal. Besides, I owe you one from my coronation. She'll be fine, Ben, Akio sighed resting a hand on Mal's shoulder as if to restrain her. He could see how much Ben cared for Mal. And Mal, Ben. If he could, the Arendelle Prince would do whatever possible to prevent anything from happening to either of them. And he knew Emir felt the same way. But what are you going to do about a sword? It's not like we expect a VK to escape the Isle in Gatecrash. Note to self, rant to Ben about the lack of a guard situation later. Ikio thought to himself as he looked around, Seriously? I know Fairy Godmother set the ward around the yacht and tied it to the invitations to the wards, but clearly that wasn't good enough. Also, Chad, did you have to lose your invitation? Ben sighed, knowing his best friend had a point, but he wasn't about to just sit by and let Freddy harm Mal. Not after all the harm he had already done. Do you all really think I'd attend an event and not have a sword? Harry asked, unsheathing said sword from his belt, as everyone turned to look at him. A pirate party isn't a good one unless there's one sword fight anyway. Where were you even keeping that? Mal asked, tilting her head. Seriously, Harry, that's the first time I've noticed you even having a sword. That's because your attention has been rightly on Benny here, Cap'n. Harry smiled slightly before the smile fell as he turned toward Ben. He handed the sword to the teenage king, an unusually stony expression on his face. Kick his ass, Ben. If he couldn't be the one to show Benny to Davy Jones's locker, Ben was a good second choice. With pleasure. I don't want you guys joining in. This is my fight. Ben nodded and turned back to Freddy. White moves first, Freddy smirked as the two boys started to circle each other. As if vultures circling their prey. Mal tensed as Ben lunged and by the sound of clashing steel sounded around the air. 
Mal bit her lip as Akia wrapped his arms around her torso, preventing her from joining the fray. They don't understand. Only a VK can handle sparring with another VK. An AK would fight fairly. Fight with honour. A VK fights only to live to see the next day. She thought as her eyes locked on the ensuing battle. There was no denying the fact that Freddy was good, but he was also inexperienced with a sword. The angels opted for daggers after all, a much better weapon to use in the event of a sneak attack. So Mal could tell that Freddy was tiring quickly against the weight of the sword, his arm not used to such a weapon, especially one that wasn't effective like all the ones that somehow found their way onto the delivery barges. And Ben hadn't made captain of Raw and the school's fencing team simply because he was the crown prince, or because of his good looks. He was able to match every lunge, every parry, with ease. Plus, he had often sparred with Ben when he had the chance. He was at least comfortable enough with the VK style of sparring that Ben was able to avoid cheap shots, like a kick to the groin. And here I thought you'd be above such a move. He snapped, moving his sword to deflect the low hit. They were both men, after all. Though, knowing what he knew, Ben would loathe to call Freddy a gentleman. All's fair in sparring. Or at least that's what your little witch of a girlfriend liked to say, according to the Isle Grapevine, Freddy snarled, his voice barely audible over the clashing steel. Mal bit her lip once more, in worry, as people continue to gasp with every blow brought down by the boys. Sure, there were no guards at Gedalian, because of the word fairy godmother had set up, but surely that didn't mean guards weren't coming, did it? Thank gods Belle and Beast aren't here. Bet I'd be a nervous wreck watching Ben spar, when I don't even want to think about what Beast would be like, Mal thought. Chip, thankfully, had been able to drag the former king and queen to safety, employing the help of a couple of Ben's teammates. Tearing her gaze away from the fight, Mal could see that Amir had Uma restrained, his arms around her torso the same way Akiyu's were resting around Mal's. And the same way Jay's arms were restraining Harry. Mal had to worry, though. Who would be able to restrain Jay if it came down to it? Did Freddy bring any of the other angels? Mal thought before she could stop it entering her head. If the Isle had taught them anything, it was the importance of backup. They could save your life and provide assistance in case you found yourself in a fight you couldn't win. Just as Freddy found himself in at the moment. Turning back into the fight, Mal smirked slightly as she saw the older boy and the leader of the angels backing away from Ben. Ben was still holding his own, and Mal had to admit, looking very attractive fighting Freddy. Mal just wished she didn't know that if Ben lost this fight, there would be an extremely high possibility that she'd lose Ben. What is he doing? Mal heard Uma mutter and saw Freddy reach into his jacket pocket as Estelle began barking in the distance, as if he was trying to warn the humans as to what was going to happen. Mal realised that the pocket Freddy was reaching into was the same pocket that he had reached in to get the invitation. But instead of the invite, Mal stared as Freddy held to anyone not familiar with the aisle, looked like a water balloon. But Mal was incredibly familiar with the aisle. And with what Freddy held in his hand, she knew just what it was, having made more than she could count. The smirk the French fanatic had on his face as he noticed Mal's attention, grey eyes meeting green, only served to eliminate all doubt from her mind. Ben, watch out! Mal exclaimed, and Ben turned to look at her. The distraction proved to be all Freddy needed as he slammed the balloon onto the deck of the yacht. In an instant, a cloud of dark red smoke surrounded all of them. Mal coughed as she accidentally breathed some of it in. Freddy better not use some of our smoke bombs to escape! Uma growled, the glow of her shell necklace and the sound of her voice being the only indication of her presence near Mal. If he does, he'll likely find out exactly what his hellfire looks like! Mal nodded, her eyes glowing momentarily as she tried to scan the area, looking for the thorn in her side. The thick smoke, though, made doing so rather difficult. However, her attention was directed elsewhere, as a faint THUNK was heard echoing through the smoke. Uma! I heard it too, Mal! Jay, you there? 
I'm here. Harry? If Freddy thinks he can touch me, he's got another thing coming. Harry said, a slight snarl to his voice. Mal's blood ran cold, as she realised there was only one other person Freddy might attack at that moment. Well, other than her, that was. Beware, for swear, make the smoke disappear! Mal exclaimed, forgetting in her fear and anger that Akio still had his arms wrapped around her torso. All she was focused on was making sure Ben was all right. That Freddy hadn't done something to him while under the cover of the smoke. But the hand gesture she had grown used to proved not to be needed, as the thick red smoke slowly began to vanish from view. Mal glared as she saw Freddy was still there. Why didn't he take this chance to escape? None of us would have been able to stop him, Mal thought, her eyes narrowing as she realised someone was lying on the deck of the yacht. That Freddy was standing over that person's body, his sword hilt raised as if he had just used it to knock against the person's skull. Way to go for a cheap shot, she thought with a narrowing glare. No! Mal heard Akio gasp in realisation. She looked at the blonde and saw an almost pained look on his face. It almost looked like he had been punched in the stomach, or witnessed the death of a beloved family member. Mal noticed that same look present on Emir's as well. There was only one person who could earn that look from both boys. And yet, she prayed to every god she knew as she turned back to the person on the ground. That the unconscious figure wasn't who she thought it was. It was then, as she studied the near lifeless figure, that she realised something important. As the smoke faded completely from view, she hadn't heard anything from Ben. Hadn't seen him. That... That could only mean one thing. That the person who was lying on the deck of the yacht, the one with the light brown hair, the hazel green eyes that were currently shut to the world, the one who was currently at the mercy of Freddy Frollo was... Ben! End of chapter. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that one. Oh, ho, 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 I loved it. Ginny, you are amazing at this. Wow. I love that Ben was the one to take the fight. It's like he and Mal swapping roles. I love it. And I love that Harry was the one to give him the sword. Just, yes. Oh boy, that was great. And the whole witches thing, Freddy's taunting. I hope I got his voice right, guys. I tried to make his voice slightly higher to make him sound more snide. And I hope that worked. Yeah, anyway, you guys know the drill. Like, comment and subscribe and hit that bell to get notified for whenever I upload a new video. Have a good day now, whatever time zone you're in. Bye my guys, girls and non-binary pals. I'll see you in another video. Take care.